get to, he's able to, you know, run around and extend plays and, you know, find guys downfield. So, um, obviously, we play him every year, twice a year, so we know what to expect. So, it's just doing what we need to do to contain him in, uh, make him uncomfortable and trying to get to him. So. Last year when uh, you played them there, you kind of took over the game. Cliff Kingsbury remembered it well. Um, did you feel, I mean, with the guys that were on COVID and stuff, any extra responsibility to kind of make those kinds of impactful plays? Um, well, obviously, that's every week you get that mindset to trying to find a way to dominate a game and you get opportunities to do that. Um, just took advantage of it. So, um, you know, anytime you got guys down, you know, you got to step up that much more and, um, you know, trying to find ways to help the defense, help the team, you know, to pull off a win. So, Is, is there any um, special motivation or acknowledgement, you know, with uh, Watt playing for the Cardinals that's, you know, six NFL Defensive Player of the Year awards on the field? Same time. Do you get up any extra knowing you guys are going to you're going to be in a showcase game with a player that impactful as well? Um, no, not really. I, I'm already motivated from just the, my, my mindset, the way I go about it every single week, trying to find a way to be successful. Obviously, I know we're going to get different looks and different things, and trying to find ways to slow guys down. But um, I, I don't get motivated off what somebody else is doing on the other side. I just you know focus on what I got to do. So. Yeah, he's he's a legit quarterback. Obviously, he could do a lot. And I talked about that already. Obviously, they got a good running game, and um, he's a part of that running game, and he's able to do a lot of things, extend plays, and and you know, if, if you don't bottle him up, if you don't get to him, if you don't make him comfortable, it can be a long day for us. So um, we know up front what we got to do to you know trying to affect the game in a big way, and that's trying to you know find a way to affect him and, and not let him get in the rhythm. So. Oh, they've been great. You know, been real style to run. Definitely Ashawn, you know, been a tackling machine. Um, obviously doing a lot of things that he did last year, late in the season, playoffs. And he's just, you know, right here at, at the beginning of the season, you know, playing lights out. Obviously great, had a, a great game last week, making a lot of big plays in the run game. And um, obviously did some good things in the pass game. So, you know, I, we expect that from them guys. They veteran guys. They they lead us at this defense of this team. So, um, you know, anytime you got guys that you're comfortable with, you play with, you understand how to play with each other, um, you know, give you a sense of comfortability. Just knowing them guys is out there, they're going to do their job and you just got to do yours. So. I know this is not the focus right now at all, but are those two guys, guys that you'd like to be playing alongside for a longer period of time than just after this year? A hundred percent. You know, like a, as long as I play in this game, I want them guys with me, you know. Um, you know, you build a good relationship with them, not just on the field, but off the field as well. But um, understanding what they bring to this defense, to this team, you know, they're, they're guys that you need um, to help us to be successful. They, they play a huge role in that. So um, if you ask me that, obviously, I'm going to say, you know, I would, I would love for them guys to, you know, be here as long as they can. And definitely as long as I'm here, I want them guys with me. So, um, yeah, for sure. That sort. <laughs> no, nah, um, never really, you know, talked to him um, face to face. Early in my career, he had reached out to me through social media. We talked a bit, and you know, that that was it, though. So. And then second, um, you guys uh, signed Malcolm Brown to the practice squad. Uh, no. Go way back, obviously, with him. What do you what do you think he's gonna maybe add to your guys' locker room and roster if, if he's elevated? Um, obviously, you know, having him back is great. You know, he did some great things with us when he was here. Um, a, a big back, a strong back that, you know, made a lot of tough yards for us. So hopefully, you know, when, when time's right and he get himself going and, you know, they feel comfortable enough to get him up and, and be a part of this team to help us as far as game time to, you know, be out there and help us, you know, make some plays. So he's just a, a guy that understands what we're doing here. He's been here, know the environment. So um, adding him back to the mix has been great. It's going to be great, I should say. So. Um, I ain't really get to see nothing yet, you know, obviously, um, heard some good things about him and, and what he can bring. So I'm just excited to, you know, um, obviously see him, you know, practice and then, you know, hopefully get some opportunities in the game to, you know, watch and see what he can bring. So you've always fed off crowd and emotion when you're on the road, uh, first road game, first division road game, is there anything that feeds you 
personally there? Yeah, trying to find a way to win on the road. You know, but obviously I, I like, you know, I guess, you know, being away and in, in a, um, away environments and, you know, you got the fans booing you and, you know, and then you, you they loud and then you can quiet them up a little bit. So um, just hearing the switch of a, a, a crowded environment from just you guys going out there as a team, making plays and, and trying to silence them guys. And then at the same time, anytime you're successful on the road, is, is great. So. Maria, after a win, it feels good. And, uh, preparation week, get a chance to get out and get after it again, get on the grass with you guys. It's always awesome. Brady, what went into the decision to sign Patrick and Lee and then Flo to come bring Lee to the team? Uh, the decision, you know, uh, last week, obviously, when Flo nicked himself early in the week on a Wednesday, um, it gets a little scary when you talk about depth as far as people that's played in the game. You know, we got some really good young players, the Kier Thomas, some of the Bradens, and all those kind of guys. And then we got poached this weekend um, off our practice squad. So, you got to go fill out those roles and get people in a position. You know, hopefully you can get some people that are veterans that can cause some pass rush and do some different things like that. Uh, my background with TAC um, has been both rocky, has been both good, has been um, what a place he's in. So, like, we always want to have a chance to give people second chances. Um, he's a guy that I know can help us in a pass rush, and he's a guy that I think deserves a second chance. And um, hopefully he can come in and do some really good things for us. What do you, I was gonna say, what do you mean by rocky? 
That was very nice by you. Can you expand on that? You know, obviously I had to cut tack um, in Atlanta, you know, for all of the various different reasons in Atlanta that happened and, and those type of things. And, like, being the head coach at the time when it happened, uh, we obviously had our, our, our differences of opinions and things of that nature. But we were always uh, remained fairly close, um, just even closest to last year and years ago. I've always been able to talk to him about um, his personal life. I've always been talking to him about his children, um, being a father, some of those things that made us close. I, I, I completely, totally invest myself in the guys that I coach and the players that I deal with, um, no matter how the result is and how it plays out. And um, I pride myself in that ability to be able to do that. Yes. Um, where do you, how do you get into his headspace? How do you really authentically see where he's at even remotely as things are moving very fast? You know, I, fortunately, I didn't have to do it overnight. You know, it wasn't something that I had to do um, just in the past couple of weeks. You know, I, I've been able to communicate with Tech um, throughout, you know, in his journey through Cleveland, um, even when he left our team in Atlanta. Um, being here, he's from L.A. His family's out this way. Um, he has a child out this way. Um, he's been able to communicate me through um, him um, through a mutual friend and other guys that we talk with and things of that nature because, like I said, I, I got genuine care in the people that we coach, um, the people that we draft, the people that we invest in, and I've always stayed close contact with them. You know, even in Cleveland, we was being coached by a good friend of mine and Joe Woods, um, just checking on him randomly, see how he was doing, see how everything was going. Uh, you know, fortunately, last year he got the Achilles injury, and, and now he's back, he's healthy. Um, he got signed by Tennessee, cleared that physical. Uh, we had a chance to poach based on – the events that happened last week, the scary events that happened last week. Uh, thankfully, Flo is as tough as he is and was able to go out there and play and give us the depth and give us the snaps that he was able to give us last week in order to get a win. And now we're fortunate enough to bring in a guy like Tack, who's played in this league, done some really good things. And let's see where he is health-wise. Let's see where he is from a practice standpoint. And let's get him out there and get him playing. What kind of mental work have you seen him over the years? A lot. You know, I'm, you, I was with Tack from the very beginning. I'm sure you guys um, cut a close record on that. Just coming into the draft and thinking about his grandmother passing, uh, when she did and going through the stuff with that um, as a young player, you know, coming to Lee, having some early success rushing the passer, particularly as a bull rusher, um, being with the Atlanta Falcons, and then going through some issues really when he's had injuries. You know, when he's had injuries, hadn't dealt with them great. Um, some of those things take toll on all of us, and it's taken a, a heavy toll on him. So him getting here, dealing with an injury last year, seeing the positive steps that he's taken, um, seeing how he looks physically right now, um, I'm very uh, – happy and, and feel bright about it, you know, as bright as you can feel about it right now. When, when uh, Bobby Wagner was talking yesterday about uh, stopping Kyler, he says, we don't stop him, he says, but we don't scheme per se. Can you kind of define the difference between containment and scheme? You know, every single week you got to have a tackling plan on different players, and he's one of those guys you got to come up with a plan for it. It's not necessarily a scheme. It's not necessarily something you're going to change to do for him. Um, but it's a collective agreement amongst guys, you know, rushing visual, rushing violent, uh, having the ability to know where you want to cut him off at, where you want to know where your help is. You got to be able to use those people when you play the guys fast and as skillfully as, as a runner. And you got to be ready to deal with those things. We failed at it before, and we've seen that happen. And we've also had positive experiences. I've went to tackle him as well. It reminds me of playing Michael Vick in the early um, – whatever it was at this point. I don't want to give away my age, but it reminds me of playing Michael Vick and, and being with those Buccaneer teams that were really fast and really explosive. And I remember an a, a NFL clip of Michael Vick saying it felt like it was more of him out there than it should be because of the plan that we use in order to attack those kind of guys. You know, like, you can't go out there and ask guys to go out there and tackle a guy one-on-one -on -one like Kyler Murray. You know, then if you go out there and you point out the fact that he missed, well, Coach, we understand we missed. Give me a plan on how to get him on the ground, how do I use my help, how do I keep him in the shoot. You know, how do I use my awareness? How do I use my instincts, my smarts, my people around me? Is everybody. You know, it's a collective agreement. It's the ultimate team sport, and that's a team event tackling Colin Murray. So you, to follow up on that, when you say you've had success and sometimes you haven't, yeah. when you played a team, it will be four times in a calendar year, is there any advantage or disadvantage either way because of the high familiarity on each side? Yes, yeah, those division games, man, they get familiar. We got um, a couple – couple rounds last year. And I feel like I've been here 12 years, the amount of times we played our division. But we've got a couple rounds against those division opponents. And when those things happen, you get the familiarity. And then it comes down to the thing of, do you change something? Do you throw them a little curveball? And then it comes down to, hey, man, this is going to be a mono a mono game. And I used to describe it you know, a long time ago, the good, bad, and the ugly when you play these type of games, right? You play teams that you got some good. You play teams that you got some bad. And then it's going to be the ugly part of it when the guys just go out there and hit each other. And that, that, that gets real. And that's what this game has been and, will, and won't change.
Sure. But what does that actually mean? And how do you make sure you guys are in a position where the next time it does Sorry, that's been ingrained in your head as a coach since you've been in it, right? Um, I can come out here and tell you about all the injuries and give you all the excuses, and you guys are still going to write bad articles about me next week if we don't perform. <laughs> so in order to change those narratives, you got to go out and you really got to get your next guy ready to go. You know, it's not a process of when the person goes down of preparing that person. You're always preparing the person for the roles, for the things they're going to do, right? Do I expect somebody to step in and be exactly what Troy Hill was and do the exact same thing? That would be unfair to that next player. But that player, there are players that have roles that Troy had. There are players that have roles that he has taken on his team, whether it be special teams, whether it be defense, whether it be particular parts of the game plan, whatever it is. You've got to have those next people up and ready to go, and you always do this collective development of a group of people. DK, since he's been here, we've talked about a bunch, right? He's had a lot of steady success. Um, this would be the first week he has potential to get a helmet. And getting out there to be the first week he'll have a chance to go show what he can do. You know, obviously he had the preseason. You know, we play our rookies. We play some of our guys in preseason to get them that early acclimation to get them ready, to get their reps, to get them sound, to let them know what you potentially can do. And he did a nice job in those showings. Um, Rochelle was very similar. You know, he got hurt as a rookie. He was able to show some toughness of bouncing back and playing through the preseason. He's been able to get a little bit of active energy on the on the, uh, the uh, our special teams this season. So getting those guys out there and putting in those different roles, like Sarah was talking about, you allude to those players, the DKs, the Rochelles, and everybody else that we could potentially put up. Um, all those guys that have roles, all those guys that have things to do, and it's my job to tell the, the head coach, my boss, on what we think we need to do to win this football game. The one thing I learned about the Rams is everything you do is going to be from a cultural, expunct, a, a cultural approach. So he's going to be a fit. It's going to be a we, not me guy. It's going to be a guy that we want to bring in and help him along. Or he's going to be the guy that comes in that we know and is already a part of that, that culture that we want to be a part of. And as far as bringing people in and finding ways to accumulate, acquire people on your team, you just got to blame less. He trades away all the draft picks and you go get people and <laughs> you bring them in here and you make it work. And then you guys write articles about less being a genius. But um, all kidding aside, you got to find ways to acquire good players, and you never stop trying to acquire good football players for your team to go out there and make plays. And, and it'll be no different every single year. You know, don't forget. You know, we're all in, and uh, we're always going to be that way. Very quickly, last one, Gary. Uh, Raheem, I know it's built differently, but he was very nice to you right there, Gary, by letting you get another question. Uh, no, they're built different, but what are things that you see in common between Aaron Donald and JJ Watt? Oh man. Um, I don't know J.J. as well. I just know him as a player. And I remember him playing for Houston and being absolutely dominant. You know, so when you're talking about dominant type performances those guys have had. I'm talking about defensive players of the years in this National Football League. That's hard to be. That's hard to do. Um, you're talking about guys potentially could be up in the MVP ranks when they were at their highest level. So those two guys have that in common. Those two guys have the fact that there are gold jackets walking, um, just haven't been named yet. And um, that won't change. You know, I got a chance to run into across J.J. this offseason. And he absolutely looks amazing. I was stunned how good he looks. And she's stunned how good he looks in person and stuff that he's able to do and, and to be able to watch that guy go out there and play. So um, those things of greatness, those are things they have in common. All set? See Thank you, guys. You. Have a good one, guys. How's it going, guys? Oh, man. You were, well, correct me if I'm wrong, you were around Malcolm Brown. Oh, yeah. yeah. Love Malcolm, that? man. It's funny, Malcolm and I actually had the same landlord from when he was here <laughs> last time. Um, yeah, unbelievable. But uh, he's awesome. Mal Malcolm is a pro's pro. Um, just 
does everything the right way, both you know on and off the field. He'll be a great example for a ton of our younger players, both in that room and out of that room. I mean, he's just a great example. He's does does things the right way that you know just, and he can make plays, man. I mean, he's had some of the best blitz pickups that we've ever had here. Um, he's had some great runs. I just think about New Orleans in 2018 when the sideline toe tap in the end zone. I mean, he's made some great plays for us. He'll be, you know, he'll be a great addition to that room. Last week you saw Ben Skoranek come over at fullback. Um, <laughs> can you talk about how that evolved and, and the need to do more of that? I think it's a mix. Um, that was something that we, we had worked on that week and, and trying to get other guys involved, right? Just trying to utilize your personnel. Benny's done such a nice job on teams as a guy that can really play in space, but also is physical enough and strong enough to play in, in the box a little bit when those matchups uh, on the nickel and, and, and are advantageous to our um, you know, area of the field. And, and I think that he, he's just natural with some of those things, right? He's a physical player. He's got a great mentality. Um, whether it shows up as much, I don't know. It was a big part of our plan last week, specific to that defensive structure and the matchup that we liked. Um, but it's something that we can, you know, maybe build off of and continue to work. But um, can't really say if it's going to be quite as much as the plan as it was last week. Yeah. I was in here talking about tree the other day. I feel like, and you know, we were excited. And you know, man, AJ's done such a nice job. And. That transition isn't always easy, right? When you're a swing tackle, having to go play guard, but he showed flashes of it, you know, and so did, you know, Tree. We, we had saw really good things out of him, uh, and that's why we made that decision. And AJ came in, didn't miss a beat, you know, did some really good things on short notice, really didn't get many reps at that position throughout the week. And he goes in, does an unbelievable job. I mean, did you really notice him? It's typically a good thing for offensive linemen. And um, he, he just did a, such a good job in pass protection, throwing hands, being physical, staying grounded. And he can really anchor as well as Tree can. And, you know, you got some big bodies now. If you're really talking about an offensive line, that right side of the ball is really big. So we like that. Man, I remember Coleman on the scout team years ago, and he, and he always had that demeanor. You know, he he ran the scout team, the practice squad, like it was his. You know, he really ran, always ran the show. He's always had that demeanor that you're looking for from a leader up front. And um, credit to him, he's really changed the way he, he physically he's developed over the years. Um, he's gotten stronger. He's gotten more confident, I think, in his play. Um, he knows what we're trying to get accomplished on offense. And he can execute, and he's confident when he's out there doing it. He makes the calls. He's firm with the calls. The players trust him. The coaches trust him. Just can't say enough good things about Coleman. Going back to Alaric, what are some of the advantages of having basically a tackle body totally. at guard? The athleticism that he's had to play with on the outside, it can almost, you know, things start to move pretty fast when you do get inside. I mean, everybody talks about tackles, tackles, tackles. But if you really think about guards and how fast things actually occur on the inside part of the offensive line, for him to be able to go and do those things because of his mass and size alone, he eats up more space. So some of those twists and stunts and movements is actually easier for him at times because of his mass and size to be able to handle those movements, staying grounded and be able to use his length inside is a huge advantage for us. You know, I don't know. I don't know. It's too too much right now. Obviously, it's a depth thing. You know, we'll get Roger Carter up and you know do some things, trying to get him a little bit of you know uh, access this week to practice and to understand the game plan. But we know Higgs is our guy that we roll with, and that's just kind of the way it goes right now. And hopefully, stays healthy. With um, the addition to bringing Malcolm Brown, how much of that is his experience as a running yeah. back? And how much of that is, if at all, let's get some maturity into that running? Yeah, I don't know if it's as much maturity as it. He, this the position's so volatile, and I think you guys saw that last year with Sony coming in, and you just can't have an, enough guys specifically at that position that know and are veterans and can really just the protections, every all those little things that go into the position that aren't just handing them the ball and running. Um, so I, I don't know if it's you know as much as a it's not definitely not a knock on those other two. It's just hey, how can we make sure that we 
build this thing behind them to make sure we have a guy that can also come in and lead and do some different things, and, and it's never going to hurt. Back on uh, Alaric, you mentioned something interesting about the, his arm yeah. length and combined with the mm -hmm. mask. Yeah. Their pass rush might come from the interior totally. on how guys played you before. Yep. How does specifically it's that great. technically work when you, you know, It's huge. <clears throat> you see some of the games last year and some of the game in earlier in the season where some of those rushes have come is in, in that inside. I mean that's that's not easy. Those guys are heavy in there. Noses and three techniques, those guys are heavier than those edge rushers that typically you can just slide up in the pocket on sometimes. And we have such great tackles in pass pro. But when you have a firm guard that can really play like a tackle with length, size, strength, it gives you such an advantage because you stop the rush now. If you can make first significant contact, right, and that's a huge thing we talk about in pass protection. If you can make first significant contact as a guy who has length and strength that he does – it just firms up the inside of the pocket so much more. Um, I'm going to ask this totally over simply, mm -hmm. but like if he basically, because of his arm length, yeah. if the guy can't reach him For sure. back, is he hard, harder to shed? It's harder to shed, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and Watt's got some length in there, and, you know, those guys have a good, good amount of length. I mean, Rashad Lawrence is playing more as a shade. He's got great get off. I mean, they, they do a nice job in their pass rush. They have longer guys, Zach Allen. They have longer guys, which is a good matchup for him to be able to come in. And this is really a good week for it to be done. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.